Hey everybody, I'm Jen. Welcome to the opensource.com weekly top five. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get an alert when we add a new video and also to write in and let us know what you enjoy about the top five. What topics would you like to see more of? We'd love to hear so we can bring you the kind of news and the kind of stories that will help you grow and learn more about open source. Okay, let's hop into the top five. At number five, an open source platform for version control hosting. When it comes to managing revision to source code, Git has quickly become the most prominent tool organizations are using. But as Jason Baker reports, the Git command line tool itself is only part of the picture. In this article, Jason tells us how GitLab is different. He says that while they offer a SaaS version of their tool set, you can also download the source to GitLab Community Edition and host your own repositories. This enables much closer control of your code and the infrastructure which supports it. In related news, last week GitLab announced they are acquiring Gitorius, a company offering a similar project, which leaves GitLab as the main player for pure open source collaboration tools. At number four this week, turning Docker with the newest security, security enhancements. Security guru Dan Walsh gives us an update on what has been added to Docker lately and covers new functionality that is going through the merge process with upstream Docker. At number three, why we ditched our legacy framework for Symfony. Roland Benetti tells us why a successful organization would toss out an excellent open source web development platform with an avid developer community. Sounds crazy, right? Well, in this story, Roland tells us why they replaced what was working with something new and how using the Symfony framework full stack is a decision they're glad they made. At number two, firing community members. Jonah Bacon returns for his second post in his Six Degrees column about open source communities and contributions. In this rousing post, he brings attention to the fact that low quality contributors are a net drain on resources because other good contributors have to take time away to support them. He says that everyone should come to an open source community with the desire to find solutions. And if a contributor needs improvement, as a manager or a fellow community member, we can be considerate, empathetic, and human in guiding them to success. However, Jonah warns, at some point, if they are unwilling or unable to work within the community constructively, the right thing to do is to ask them to find somewhere else to participate and share their energy and talents. Finally, at number one, which programming language is best for beginners? I think this is a first, having a poll is number one, but we're happy to report that we've had a lot of votes. Um, this poll is about being um, part of a community and being a good open source citizen. And in doing that, you might wanna learn how to code. Um, so if you do, we ask our readers, we've asked our readers, um, which programming language is best to learn first? Should new coders start with an old reliable language like C or perhaps something lighter and easier to learn like JavaScript or Python? So far we've had over a thousand votes and we'd love to have yours too. So check out these articles. The notes are in the um, comments section below and you can also see our article on the website every Friday. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.